five, then when we finish, it's going to be like an introduction to the rest of, of some of the chapters in the book. I'm going to do the end and then start in chapter six. Because I've noticed in the share slides of the of the book club, uh, it has each chapter has its own video. Okay. So not to confuse uh John <laughs> when he's uploading, you know, the, the videos. Okay. <clears throat> sounds good. Yeah, it sounds okay. great. Yep. Okay, so let's start. Uh yeah. Okay, so uh welcome back. Uh we're uh, discussing the explainable uh, interpretable models, and this is chapter five, which, as I, you know, uh, told you, is an introduction to what is called the instance level exploration. In other uh, uh, textbooks or articles, you could uh, also call it local level, right? So the point here is to uh, have have uh, and know several methods to uh, uh, go under the hood of each of these uh, you know algorithms. Let's say uh, you know random forests, uh, super vector machines, uh, ex, uh, extreme gradient boosting, etc. Deep learning, and try to see what is the what is the relationship between each of these uh, you know parameters that the model is using to arrive to a certain prediction for a particular observation, okay? That's what, that, that's what local level, instance level uh, means. Uh, so in this chapter, uh, they're going to, excuse me, excuse me. I didn't put the not disturb. Okay, so, uh, the learning objectives for this chapter is just give you a high level introduction to this to these methods. Uh, the first one that we're going to be discussing, and it does in chapter six, is going to be the breakdown plots. Then, uh, after that, uh, the authors are going to continue to discuss the Sh Shapley uh, additive explanations, the line, which is the local interpretable model agnostic explanations, and then the Satellis Paribus. Profiles some methods. Um, okay, so as I gave you already, you know, like a, a, a brief introduction, this instance level, so local level exploration methods, uh, what it do, what it, what they do is that they give you a sneak peek on how the models yields a prediction for a particular observation. Okay. And it evaluates the effects of explanatory variables on model predictions. Uh, we can do what if analysis and also discover why the, the model is providing in certain uh, instances in providing uh, incorrect predictions. So you can see this very well in a classification uh, problem. Uh, when you are classifying, for example, if, uh, if an event has happened or, or not, um, the model is going to give you some probabilities in terms of what is the probability of the instance no and the instance yes. And you can uh, verify which is the pattern of the variables and how they are uh, changing, you know, the, the mean of the prediction to arrive to the final, final probability. All right. Um, so we're going to go deep into the breakdown plus. That's going to be the chapter six uh, for additive attributions. Then in chapter seven, we're going to study the breakdown plus board for the interactions between uh, these, uh, you know, these predictors. And then in chapter eight, we're going to discuss the Shapley additive explanations for average attributions. He uses a little bit of game theory uh, for, you know, a, a random, uh, you know, ra random distur disturbances to uh, explain uh, the predictions of the model. Um, then uh, chapter nine is going to be dedicated to the line, the locable interpretable model agnostic explanations. Uh, this uses the interpretation of the model as a function and investigates the local behavior of this function on the point observation of interest sets. 
All right. And uh, finally, from chapters 10 to 12, we're going to uh, study something called Ceteris Paribus Profiles and Methods. And that phrase, Ceteris Paribus, is a Latin phrase that translates as with other conditions remaining the same. So if you want to study the interaction, let's say your two uh, regressors, uh, we're going to assume that the other regressors are in the same level, and then we're going to study interactions between those two. Okay? And it, it kind of, you know, uh, 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 precludes uh, some of the, you know, what if situations uh, shows, uh, showing how the model prediction could change if the value of a single explanatory variable uh, changes, all right? Okay, so that's it for chapter five. We go here, let's end, okay? And then now we go to chapter six. Okay, so let's start again. Uh, any comments or any questions before we start chapter six? It's, uh, it's, it's right. Good. Yeah. That chapter five is just a, a brief introduction of the next chapters that deal with uh, instance or local levels. Okay. So let's go then. All right. So we are now in chapter six and chapter six is titled Breakdown Plots for Additive attributions. Uh, the learning objectives is introducing the uh, the reader to the what is called the breakdown uh, plots. We're going to be using the Titanic uh, imputed uh, data set. If you are familiar with this data set, uh, usually this data set includes some missing values, especially in the age uh, variable. The one that we're going to be used just to uh, you know, focus on the on the explanatory uh, you know phase. We're going to be using a data set that doesn't contain those uh, missing values. Then we're going to see the pros and you know evaluate some of the pros, pros and, and the cons. And uh, I I missed it. I had to you know correct that. But there's an, an R uh, script example after the pros and the cons uh, section. Okay, so when we are dealing with this, uh, what is called the black box models, uh, you know, some algorithms that, uh, because of the complexity of what they're doing, uh, you know, in the in the mathematical uh, formulation, uh, there are some common questions about how the model arrived to the predicted result. In other words, uh, let's take the example of a random forest. We know that random forest uh, does uh, usually uh, takes, you know, the, the bootstrapping uh, mechanism, you know, to uh, construct, you know, any any number of, of trees, and those trees are going to be then grouped and then voted on the final on the final outcome. So, how do we know, more or less, you know, what is the what is the most uh, uh, variable importance? of their predictors. How do we arrive to that you know, result in a more graphical or uh, intuitive way? And which variables, of course, contribute to, them, to most to the result? Which are the ones that are really making an impact in that, in that prediction? So a possible solution to this is to use this uh, breakdown plot to decompose the model's prediction into contributions that can be attributed to different explanatory variables. So uh, this is the first, I'm going to go going back and forth, you know, with the with the book. So in the first um, uh, what is called intuition, okay, we have this this graph that the author presents. So let me read an introduction, then we go into the graphs. So let's assume that prediction of a function x is an approximation of the expected value, okay? The expected value that could be the mean 
well, of, 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 of all, all the values, on, of the dependent variable y, given values of explanatory variables x. So the underlying idea of this breakdown plot is to capture the contribution of an explanatory variable to the model's prediction by computing the shift in the expected value of y, while fixing the values of the other variables. So in this panel of, uh, of plots, there are three plots here, right? In this panel, what we are investigating or, or trying, trying to get a, a more granular view of the prediction obtained by a random forest model for a particular passenger. We call it Johnny D, which is a passive, an eight-year-old passenger traveling in first class, okay? So uh, the, the discussion here also is in this figure. Figure 6.1 uh, gives you uh, the explanation of each of these uh, 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 plots. So let's take plot A. Plot A, what it's telling you is that if we take all the data, okay, and the results of the of, of, of those observations, which is the survival uh, component, which is a binary component, uh, zero if it if it not if the passenger doesn't didn't survive, and one if it survived, if you take the average. Okay, the expected value, the average of all those predictions is going to give you a number. Okay, and this number, uh, you know, according to this uh, example, is 0.235. Then, when we add the age, all right, and we know that the age of the passengers is eight, what it's going to do, and uh, let me read it for you, okay, in the explanation. So the panel A, what it's going to do is that the first row shows the distribution of the mean value, red dot of the model's predictions for all the data. And the next rows, okay? The next rows, which are uh, the age, the class, the fare, the gender, you know, the, all the uh, variables that we're considering for this uh, model. Uh, the next rows show the distribution of the mean value of the predictions when fixing values of subsequent explanatory uh, variables. So if we take if we, if we took age, considering that the others are constant, the age eight is going to be moving that particular number of 0.235 to the right. In other words, in a positive way, to a value around 0. 0.5 something. Okay, right, right here. Then if we add the class, considering the age and the class, the dot, that mean value, of the expected value of the response is going to be moving further to the right. Then if we take fair, if we took fair consideration, then it's going to be back into the left, which is going to be a negative uh, contribution. Then we keep going until we get the final. And the final uh, number after adding all those contributions, positive or negative, depending on how the model is, you know, is considering them, that final uh, uh, additive uh, mean is going to be your prediction, okay? So this plot, what it goes, is illustrates first, the A illustrates the distribution, okay, of each of those, uh, you know, circumstances, uh, starting from all the average of the responses without any variables considerations, and then considering each one by one. Okay. Everyone with me right now? Are you following me? Yeah. Yeah. Good? Yeah. Okay. Hey, Ricardo, one thing. Yeah. Um, would you go mm -hmm. to uh, the figure A and just explain to the group the, uh, you know, the all of the gray lines, uh, what those represent? Yeah. Let me check here. Okay. Because he has the... You know, right, the training data. Yeah, these are all, all the all, all the all the instances where we're considering that observation. Okay, you know, yeah. as you can see, it starts kind of you know reducing the number of lines each time you know we add a variable because here we're considering the age, and is the age at eight of all those instances you know of age. Then we're considering age and class first. And then you start reducing 
uh, those observations. Okay. Like filtering, it's like they take Correct. All, all the data, they, yeah. they filter all the observations that are eight, and then they go, okay, I have eight and also first class. Mm -hmm. And they go deeper that way. So at the end, you will have only a few observations. Exactly. But so, the right. Remarks, so, right? so here at the first, you are considering all the data, right? And you see all these lines, right? Then when you start considering only H8, because that's the observation that you're hunting into, then you start seeing less lines, less lines as you include more variables. Okay. Yeah. So, so just to be uh -huh. clear, or, or kind of question for the group. So the gray lines, um, they're, they're dependent on the training data set that you're using, right? Uh -huh. It's it's based on right. the observations within the training data set. Right. Yeah. Right. And yeah. as you, as to your point, Ricardo, I mean, I think as you get down to, you're, you're applying so many filters, there's basically no more observations left. All right. Yeah. You you go you go exactly to the observation. That is the the particular uh, you know the par the particular instance of that you know of of, of this parameter. Mm -hmm. So, for example, eventually you're going to be getting a prediction from an observation that has these unique parameters in the regressors. Okay. What would happen mm -hmm. if the training data set didn't have one of these filters? The yes. training or the test? No, I think the training that you... It would be the training, say, right? Because let's, let's, say... If there was no fair 72, I mean, maybe that's a continuous variable. I, I don't know if there would be... Uh, yeah, oh, okay, okay. Or, 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 let's, or maybe males. That... Everything was females and you put in male. You know what I mean? Like, Right. Uh, would this yeah. work? Okay. Uh, that's, a, that's a good question. Okay. I think that uh, would be a, a just a point, Ricardo. I yeah. think that rather than showing a, a violin instrument with that distribution, I think would be just an observation. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and, and maybe because this order, and you'll see, you know, that this order is not arbitrary, okay? It's based on the variable importance, you know, of the mechanism that the that the that the breakdown, the Daleks package is using. Uh probably, you know, it it could happen that it's not considered, you know. That 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 particular instance is not considered in the variable importance order of of this uh, data, so we'll we'll have to yeah. uh, you know do an experiment to answer that. Okay, because right now this yeah. this is present, you know all these values of this yeah. particular uh, uh, regressors uh, are, are present in the training data. Yeah. Okay. What, yep. what I was Make, trying, trying to sense. see is, for example, in the in the test data, what happens if there's a factor in the test data that is not included in the in the training? Okay, which is more or less similar to what you are trying to, you know, try, trying to ask. I think. Right, right, right. Yeah. And I, I guess I keep going back to the gray lines. Like you can't, you don't have any gray lines if <laughs> that, that yeah. value doesn't exist. Yeah, and 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 you have to see, you know, where 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 you know is 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 that this parameter considered? You know, with that, with that, with that, uh, yep. with with that particular, uh, you know, uh, uh, instance. Yeah, but it's it's something that we should, you know, we should experiment. Okay, to make sure, you know, that 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 the, what what we think is going to happen is is happening real. Yep. Okay, so in a nutshell, that's basically the the breakdown plot. Okay, so we can conclude uh, a couple of things here. We can conclude that the mean prediction. For this model, the random forest model for a Titanic data set is equal to 23.5%, okay, from the whole data. And that the model's prediction for Johnny D is equal to 42.2%, which is much higher than the mean prediction. Now, I have a question for you guys. Uh, if someone asks you, uh, does the model predict that Johnny D is going to survive or not? What, what would you answer? I think we would need to make some tuning. Okay, we need to test that because right. we usually said that fifty percent is what you need to survive. But 
Correct. We need Correct. to so, check so it, the attrition. Yeah. So so the so the right answer is that it depends, right? Mm -hmm. It depends because if your threshold is 0. 0.5, in terms of dividing the probability of okay, if it's greater than 0. 0.5, yeah, you know, go go to the one, right? Survive. If it's less than 0. 0.5, it's going to you know uh, zero, which is going to be not survival, right? But it depends on the threshold. So right now, that's what this model doesn't give you the prediction in terms of the categoricals, right? The zeros and ones. It tells you the probability, right? And in this case, this particular per passenger has a probability that is higher than the mean. That's all we can say right now. Okay. Okay, and I give you a little bit of a, you know, of a, 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 a you know, a, 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 an advance, okay, in terms of the order of these uh, variables. And it, the order is comes from, you know, how important is age, class, fare, et cetera, in terms of the whole uh, li list of uh, variables. So in this case, these two explanatory variables, age and class, are for this model are the most important, okay? Because they have the, the higher magnitude of change uh, between the mean of that, you no, know, the whole data, the mean, and then the mean of the uh, class of H8, okay? Uh, and all the explanatory variables have smaller effects and they actually reduce the increase in the predictive value, including by class and age. So as you can see, this one's, even though it, it you know, by, 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 uh, by the model uh, are positive, like the others are negative, but you can see that the magnitude start decreasing. So it's always this breakdown plot, if we run it without any altering on the order, is going to give you this kind of output from the uh, most variable, uh, you know, uh, important variable to the least important variable and the magnitudes and their direction that each one is uh, contributing to the mean of the of all the predictions. Good? Yeah. We're good? Yeah, we're good. Okay, so let's continue. All right, so in the book, um, the author uh, gives us, you know, a section on the method, which is the, the mathematical formulas where this you know breakdown plot is 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 founded, uh, I don't think we have you know enough time to explain all this you know formulation. But I will give you kind of the results of what the you know the formulas are you know calculating and what is the output. So in the first one, taking again the Titanic data, and that that passenger Johnny D, the first table uh, six point one which is, you know, uh, the, 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 the breakdown for, for linear models output, what is going to give you here is the variable importance, okay? Which are the variables that are mostly, you know, contributing to, you know, the, the, the movement of the average of the model, all right? And you have a right here in this, uh, in this uh in, in this deltas right the, the the rate of the change between this number and the the distribution of each of these categories then the second part the table number two is the one that from that order then we're going to calculate the you know the 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 change in the mean and which direction we are going to be you know, uh, doing the change to the right, which is positive, or to the left, which is negative. Okay. So as you can see, from the mean of all the results, 0.235, we have that the age moves it to this, you know, uh, to this level, 0 0.05. So the delta between these two values is going to be 0 0.2698, which is corresponds to this you know, magnitude here, this vector magnitude here. Then the class is going to also add in the class and the age is going to contribute to 0.59. So the delta is going to be from 0.59 to 0.505. And it's going to give you that magnitude also positive. And so forth, okay? 
until we get to the you know we don't we don't we don't have any more any more uh, observations then we get uh, our prediction you know we hone it to that particular instance all right so that's the mechanics go back uh, to the first uh -huh. table to the what yeah. to the first table that you were showing right here yeah right, right here right here yeah right there you know mm -hmm. this table was a little bit challenging to me to understand at first mm -hmm. time right and what are they doing here because it's like they don't go step by step just they show the table what they did is to take the training data and and get the it's like I have all the observations in, in my training data. Let's see, we have 1,000 observations. Uh -huh. And then we change the value of the age for all the for all the values in our right. training data to eight. Right. And then we get our mean of the of the prediction of the probability. You know, we get the, uh -huh. the probability mean. And that's the 0 0.5 that they have. And Correct, they, which, is, which is similar to this one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's the same then, thing. Yeah. The point is that at least the first is the same value. It doesn't uh -huh. change. Yeah. And then they go and take the mean without any change. That is 0. Point, no, that is do, uh, 0. 0.23 that you see uh, above. A little bit uh -huh. higher. You see the B sub 0 there. Yeah. So that is they, the mean, they, mean of the training the mean, set, right? The training set. Yeah. So for they, all the responses, yeah. For all the so response. They take the difference and then place the absolute value in the next code. And then they repeat the process without changing. You know that we saw before that they we were changing variables mm -hmm. like um, one and then the other. No, they just are doing back one by one in this case. All right. So then, okay, they have the value for the 8H. Then they replace the original value for the age and then change the value for the class uh -huh. and, and, and do the same. And that's the way that they get the order. Why? Because if one variable changes the probability and the other one also changes the probability in a really close number, if you make the, the step after step, you won't see the importance of the second variable. You know, because they were correlated in some way. Uh -huh. And for that reason, they just were doing by, uh, one by one. And based on that difference on, to the mean, because everything is related to the mean. Correct. Then they get the order. That's the process they follow to get that order. And then yeah. they apply the steps because they say, if we apply one step to the other and the, and the predictions are close to each other, we will see a, a little difference, but really the impact could be big, you know, it could be important, but we don't know. That's why we have the order. It's really hard uh, after mm -hmm. just watching the uh, just watching the plot to see those differences, because if you see the values, uh, the class, for example, the delta is 18, but you go down, Ricardo is, yeah, is much less. It's zero point eight. Correct. The value that we see in the because both variables, even both are important, have a pin in pine the probability. You know, because the, the, the probability went from twenty three to forty two. That yeah, it has a huge impact. But when you go to the breakdown plot that we are going to plot at the end, mm -hmm. you don't see that impact as a important. You know, because the age and the class take the passenger to the to a really close probability each one. Yeah, what, what what I could add there, okay, and that's how I make sense of this, you know, two tables, is that in this one, we are only considering each variable without adding, you know, one to the other. Right. Okay. So each each yeah. row here is a single filter. So when Correct. you look at class equals first, Correct. It's, what you you don't mean class equals first and age equals eight. eight. You're not adding additional right. You're not filters adding as, you, as you go down, exactly. right? And the delta is each of these means, okay? According to the you know to the parameter that we're choosing, is yeah. uh, subtracted by the mean. Yes. So it's just one variable by the mean. Here 
we are adding, you know, that that uh, variable we're adding to the next one, okay? And then we're filtering those observations and getting yep. different means. But the thing is that this table gives us the order. That's right. the important thing. That, the whole purpose of the table 6.1 is it's for the heuristic that's being used in this algorithm. Correct. Correct. It's, it's not really based on anything truly theoretical. No, no it's, it's just like a pre-process to then do the, the break. Yes, yes. Okay. Yep. All right. So, Emma, hey, if you want to get into the weeds, you know, just, you know, get into these formulas and hey. Yes, you, I, I thank uh, you for not digging in, going down the rabbit hole of the formulas. You, it, you'll have a great time. I, I, I'm yes. sure. <laughs> I mean, the All right. formula, Galo, I think yes. you just need to see one of them. You go up. Yeah. To me, because the point is that the way that they explain me is a little bit hard to see, you know, the, the expected value. Right. So you go a little bit up, you will see that the function go up. You will, you will see a, a formula that is the, our prediction go up. Uh, a little bit up because yeah, the, the six point, yeah, that's the more important one. So, mm -hmm. the 6.5 right. that's what we are doing when we are making the prediction plot. We are mm -hmm. taking the mean of the prediction and then adding individual contributions based on the base of the predictors to Correct. end with the, set, with the original prediction. Mm -hmm. And that's it, yeah, that's yeah. the point of the plot. Yeah, that, that, and that's what is reflected in this result, in this table. Okay, you know, starting with that and then seeing what is adding, you know, to the movement of that mean, which is of this, you know, variables, but they're being added uh, uh, subsequently. Okay. Okay, so let me see what I have here. Okay, so basically that is the breakdown plot. Okay. You know, nothing, you know, uh, very fancy. And one of the things that I wanted to make sure that you know, we cover is the pros and the cons. Because remember, this, depending on what you are trying to, to achieve, you'll have to, you know, uh, choose the method that, that fits that, uh, uh, you know, that, 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 that research, okay, that other that research. So... The BD plots offer a model agnostic approach, right? That can be applied to any predictive model that returns a single number for a single observation, for an instance. What are the advantages? Well, the plots are usually generally easy to understand. You know, it's very intuitive because you can see where does the, you know, the mean of all the prediction starts and how it's changing depending on the, in, you know, on the addition of the variables that you're using the model and then you get the final, the final predictions. And some of the illustrations are compact, of course. Uh, this is a simple model. Maybe if you have uh, a model that has, let's say, 100 uh, variables, uh, probably you'll have to you know, make sure that you uh, hone your analysis on the most important ones. And usually, if you have 100 variables, uh, not the, the whole 100 are going to be that, you know, equally important, probably around 10, or even 12 will give you the more, you know, the more bang for, for the buck, okay? So that's why it says that illustrations are compact because you can then hone on those uh, variables that are most important. What are the disadvantages of this plot? Well, they can be misleading. For models that include interactions, here there are no interactions between those variables. So what we're doing is getting the most uh, important variable and then adding the contributions of each of them to the uh, movement of the mean of the whole of the whole observations. Okay, so that's why we're going to study in the next chapter breakdown plots, but including interactions with uh, you know the different variables. Uh, the choice of the ordering of the explanatory variable that is used in the correlation of the variable importance measure is important. That doesn't mean that the that the values is going to change, but the order of what you know the calculations are being done are you know are, are important to this model, okay? And you can change it. You know, there's a way to change the order and see if there is a change in the in the final result in the final prediction. Uh, and of course, for a large number of variables, 
uh, BDP plus may be complex, includes many explanatory variables with small contributions to the instance. So the way that I have seen is that they only, for example, 100 variables, they only hone on the first 10 or 12 to make sure that the plot can be uh, fully understood. All right. Any comments or questions here? I uh, know that that's really important. I was thinking about the strategy mm -hmm. to understand uh, about the, the 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 order. You know, what yeah. you do is just to make some sample in the order. So I mm -hmm. have the the predefined order that is the variable important order. But mm -hmm. what we could do is to try to make like five plots by sample and try to check if right. the contributions change in the scene in, in the sign. So mm -hmm. you see uh, important changes, maybe that's because we have important interactions. If you Correct. want to play sure with these models, you, you should try to use them with simple models like linear models that may, may be additive that have this pattern. Mm -hmm. But even though, for example, random forest that is a really flexible model, you can do it, but you need to be to understand that you cannot just use this method. You can use this as a start point and maybe exactly. start making yeah. some interaction. They have a really good example to, to explain that in the book. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and remember, uh, variable importance, there are different methods to this to to you know to calculate this. So not every mo within the model, not every method is going to give you the same, you know, the same results, the same outputs. Okay. So in this case, we're just you know taking this breakdown model as implemented in the Dalex uh, library. If you take another library, it could be, it could, there could be some changes in this, okay? Okay, so uh, let's do then uh, some of the examples that uh, I, I was, you know, I, 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 I was checking in the, in the book and 6.5 give us an R code example of what is, how, how to implement uh, this, uh, this plot. So the first thing we're going to uh, uh, load the Daleks uh, library, and the latest Dalek library already has the Titanic, right? The Titanic imputed uh, uh, data set, which is the data set, no missing values. So here we're going to then load also the library for the random forest, and then we're going to uh, you know build a model, right, for uh, all this. Uh, uh, you know, uh, parameters. The survive, which is the response, and then gender, age, class, embarkation, fare, and all that, which is the same one as we, you know, uh, did in the uh, in the in the examples uh, that that we, you know, that we discuss. So when we do the when do do this in the model uh, uh, Titanic, uh, random forest, okay. The parameters are 500 number of trees, which is the you know the the, the default, and uh, the number of variables tried at this place is going to be two. The mean square of the receiver is going to be this, and the variable experience is going to be 35.8, which is kind of an R square you know measure here. So to get that explanation, uh, you know, object, we need to uh, construct this function, which is explained right. And this is the model, this is the data, this is the Y, which is the response, the survival, uh, you know, uh, uh, outcome. Uh, we're going to do a label, just to do a label and we're going to colorize. So when we do this, okay, we get kind of, a, you know, an insight of what is, what is, what is the, the components of this object Call explain Titanic RS. And what we want to check is that even though when we did the, 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 the discussion of the random forest in the in the diagrams, you know, that are in the book, when I run this, the mean is not going to be now 235. It's going to be 0.3225. Okay, so there has been a change somewhere. I don't know if it's in the data set or if it's in the random forest, or maybe we need to set some seed number, but there's a change, okay? I think they, uh, it, they apply a seed in the prior chart. 
the random forest. Oh, okay. Okay. So, yeah. So, mm -hmm. maybe we have to, you know, uh, apply the same random seed unless uh, they did it before the, the change, Version. the random seed generator. Okay. Remember that one that we discussed in the, in the book club of the hand handsome machine learning. Okay, but we, we could we could try that anyway. But now we have a mean because of that, you know, uh, random generator, we have a mean of 0.3225. Okay, but no problem. Uh, we want, you know, to make things a little bit fresh here. So now we're going to uh, create a data frame for the, the parameters that we were discussing for that data passenger, Johnny D, right? Uh, the class is, is first, from the first, second, third, and so forth. Uh, the gender is male, age eight, uh, no siblings, no uh, porch, fair 72, and embark in Southampton. And let's see what happens here, okay? So when we do this new data frame, and we're going to apply it to our explainer uh, object, we're going to use this function, what is called predict parse. I've seen in other texts, I've seen only predicts, but uh, the Daleks has been a very active, you know, library developed. So now with the recent vignettes, we see that the predict parse is the function that we should use to, you know, generate uh, the plots that we want to generate, you know, apart from the breakdown. So we're going to do predict parts. We're going to do the object of the explainer, explain Titanic RF, and we're going to input the new data, which is going to be the new passenger. And this is uh, the contribution of each of the of the of, of the variables. Okay. Uh, the mean, okay, and each of the contributions of each of the of the variables. When we put this in a plot, as we have seen before, right? We start with the mean of all the observations, then age and class is still the most important variables. They're the ones that are moving in magnitude more than mean, especially to the right. And then the others that are going to move it to uh, some of the some of the left, some of the right, and get the prediction, which is in this case, is going to be 0.473. Okay, so we got a higher mean, and also we got a higher, you know, uh, probability of, of, of the prediction here. Okay. Uh, okay, so one thing that I was, you know, intrigued it was about the order of the, you know, of, of this variable to see, okay, if I change the order, would the outcome of the prediction change? So there's an argument in predict parse called order, and you can order manually those variables instead of letting, uh, you know, the the algorithm, you know, choose it by the by the most uh, importance first and then so forth, we can alter that order. And what we're going to do is alter the order, putting class first, then age and gender and fur and so forth. So let's see what happens here. Okay, we got 0.473. So we change the class and also we change the age. You know, we, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in interchange it one or, or the other. So we got, you know this uh, new uh, changes in 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 the in the mean response, but then uh, we get the same prediction. Okay, so even though we altered that order of class and age, and we uh, set the others uh, to the same order that we had before, uh, the the prediction didn't change. Okay, so that's something very curious in terms of you know. If I change all these orders, I permute all these orders, would there be a change in the prediction? Uh, something that we have to, you know, investigate further. Okay. And uh, we put also, you know, this uh, argument, use this argument, maxim maximum features equal to three. So what it is going to do is just label, right, individually, the first three, uh, 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 you know, uh, variables, re re regressors, and then the others are going to be a clump into all the factors, which is convenient when you have a lot of, of features here. Okay. Any questions here? I found this kind of intriguing. <laughs> no, I think they won't, 
Mm -hmm. the, the value won't change at the end because the purpose of the plot is that. Right. The question would be if the contributions uh, change in sign, you know. Yeah. Uh, that would be maybe the the question that would be you permute the order. Correct. To change because they, it's like an equation, you know. They have an equation and they always have yeah, and that, yeah. Definitely, the contributions of each one uh, change. Mm -hmm. Okay. You know, because here in class, you have 0 0.05, right? Okay. Exactly. Considering age, age eight and class first. But then here, because class is the first one, then you get, you know, a different number here. Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. So, but but I, I would like to make more, you know, more experimentation, uh, you know, to see if there's a there's a change in the prediction. Probably not, but you know, mm -hmm. I'll I'll have to you know dedicate some time there. Okay. So in this one, uh, there's another argument here. Uh, keep the distributions right argument, and this one, what it does is that when we plot the you know the uh, the 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 predicted parts uh, object uh, with the keep distributions true, what we get is that first plot that we were seeing on panel A, where we get you know the distribution of each of the of, of the classes, okay, and also the lines where the obs what observations are being considered. So if you were you know trying to figure out how to replicate that panel A, is because of this. Uh, Argument, keep distributions. All right. Okay, let's see what else is here. Okay, that's it. Uh, only one last thing. And I think, I don't know if it was a uh, SAC uh, that we were mentioning in the last uh, session, previous session, about you know what why the authors are not uh, using uh, kind of a modern algorithms, especially for example, for random forest. What are not they using Ranger, which is you know a faster algorithm, or even XGBoost? Well, uh, I researched on the Daleks uh, uh, homepage, and this is a vignette on the Titanic data set, and they are giving you different models. Ranger, for example, uh, how to you know extract the the, the explanatory objects using the Daleks. They have also uh, super vector machines here. Let me see somewhere here. Okay, let me see. Let me see if I know uh, more models. Okay, uh, we have LRM. We have GBM. Remember that G the library GBM that library is not in development, so be careful with that one. <laughs> okay, uh, super vector machines here. Uh, KNN. Okay, uh, let me see what else. Okay, uh, you know, a, a lot of models. And I also have uh, the code for using XGBoost, okay? Using XGBoost also with Daleks. But this one is, is kind of a, a, a vignette that you could use if you want to uh, compare uh, different models uh, using this uh, this library, okay. Especially you know using a ranger, with that's the one that caught my my attention. All right. Yeah, thanks for looking into that. I think I I brought that up uh, okay, last yeah. week that some of the models just uh, that they were being used didn't look like uh, right. modern implementations. Yeah, and and like I tell you, you know this Daleks is is actively developed, so uh, you know they're, they're trying to stay on top of things. You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah, and like you said, they're they're they've implemented this for XG Boost and Ranger, which is great. Right, right. And those right. are two two models I use quite a bit. I think that you can Excellent. do it. I was also checking, and you can let me to share my screen also. That's, uh yeah. Do, uh, do you want me to end? Yeah, the video? you can end. Okay. 